Okay. Do we have any veterans? Well, good morning, everyone. 
Welcome to Bell Springs United Methodist Church. If you're here in person or joining us this morning online, we welcome you to this morning's service. Thank you for attending and thank you for tuning in. Just a few announcements this morning. Uh, church Council met. Uh, these are in the bulletin uh, on September 21st to vote on a budget recommendation. And this budget will pre be presented at the charge conference, which is October 11th. Um, copies will be available by next Sunday of, of next year's budget. Uh, the church's lay leadership and nominations committee has prepared a ballot for the 2023 lay positions in the church, which will be voted on at the charge conference. And the charge conference itself will be on October 11th at Tullahoma First United Methodist Church. Um, God is blessing our church. Please pray that our leaders both in, within the congregation and the larger church will lead according to God's will. We thank you for your faithfulness and for your attendance this morning. Are there any other lessons or lessons or announcements that anyone, lessons would be good too, but if there are any announcements that anyone would like to make. Yes, ma'am. I would like to welcome all the veterans, those dead and alive, um, servicemen, policemen, firemen that are alive, that have risked their life, that said I'm going to leave somebody out. But they're all watching today because of those big old timers right, video that, I barely figured out how to do. Um, I was just doing it for my grandchildren, but there's several people watching, and so I think we need to give an applause to them. Thank you for your service. If you would please join me in our opening prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this chance to be in your house and to learn from you. Be with those who are ill today, who suffer. Send your Holy Spirit to comfort and heal them. Be with those who mourn and grieve for lost loved ones. May your Holy Spirit give them hope. And be with the leaders of this country and of our world. There are so many problems in the world, so much violence. So much poverty, anger, hurt. Be with us. Help our leaders to learn from you and to lead according to your will. Let us treat this day like it is a gift from God. Help us to learn to live each day like it is a gift from you, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. And please stand and join me in our opening hymn which is number 451. Be thou my vision. How many verses? All of them, three. Be thou my vision.
have a little art, OTC guys that I tried to avoid and get out of the way of. They were going to keep their pace no matter what, and they were sweating. And that was one of the main groups I admired because they're our future military. So I'm sure some of you all were in ROTC, whether you admit it or not. I was not, I'm ashamed to say. But my teaching was my calling. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Don't want to forget them. Uh, please join me for number 881, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our next hymn is number 301, Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross. Free. 
let's take a minute to greet each other before we go on in the service today. could have happened, but I don't know when it could have been moved from back there either. Right, right. Uh, hey, Jen, it seems like too long.
I'll talk about that. All right, it's good to be together. And I'm so glad that we're getting a chance to visit with each other. And uh, so it's a good thing. I, we do want to go to the Lord in prayer. And of course, you know, if you look at the uh, list on the back of the bulletin there, you see that we're praying for Jane. And we appreciate her being here and playing the piano today. Uh, Can I say one thing? Sure. I get the results Monday at 3 o'clock. We'll pray for Jane. And and then the next name on our list is Brother Johnson, who went, who went. So they're very excited about that. And of course, Angie is with him and helping him today. Now, I haven't put this in print anywhere, and I don't know whether I'll really say it because I'm going to wait to see whether it happens or not, but he's convinced he's going to be here with us next week and in the service, and, and so we uh, will give him a chance to talk, uh, you know, all he wants to, and he and I have been in conversation for some months now about uh, having him an opportunity to speak, and that may happen next week, but you know, lots of things can happen. So uh, pray, pray for him, pray for their family as they move forward, and we appreciate that. Uh, uh, of course, uh, we continue to pray for uh, Sher- uh, Shirley Riddle, who's had surgery this week and is really having a tough time uh, as she's uh, in the process of trying to recover from cancer surgery. So we'll lift her up as we pray today. And then Susan had surgery and uh, is recovering at home, and we believe that she's going to do well, but let's continue to lift her up. Y'all have other needs that you want to mention out loud? Yes, Amy. Uh, let's, let's pray for Gary. Others? Yes, Mom. Well, and uh, those of you who have emailed me or texted me prayer request, I appreciate that. And I just want to encourage that kind of thing so that we'll be able to keep updated on what's happening with folks. And and so let's lift our hearts to the Lord as we pray today. Oh, Lord, we have so many things uh, in our hearts and in our minds and going on around us. And we thank you for the fact, Lord, that you have called us to serve you during these days. And uh, while we don't understand everything that's going on in our society and in our world, and we look around us and we see places where it's hard for us to realize the war and violence and persecution that we can see evidence of, we know that's happening today, Lord, and we pray for those that are involved in that. And we ask, Lord, that you would guide our world Uh, Be with leaders of nations as you've uh, told us in your word to pray for those uh, who are in leadership today. And we do pray that they might make decisions that are in accordance with your will. But there are many things in our world that we see are not as they ought to be today. And so every place today, Lord, we pray for peace. We pray that you would guide the affairs of our world. And we also pray for our nation today uh, as well, Lord. We pray for every leader, whether it be from whatever party or whatever position today. We pray for the president of our nation, Joe Biden, and we pray for all those who serve of every party. And even as now we are in election season, Lord, we pray that you would guide our nation by who uh, gets elected into office But, Lord, we thank you today that our confidence is not in our political system, but it is in you. And so, Lord, help us to realize that you are the answer to every need that we have today. And so, Lord, we do ask that you would help and guide and be with every situation around us. We pray for our church today, Lord, and even now as we 
look around, we see evidence of the fact that there is a need for building and and uh, other things that are uh, involved there. We just ask, Lord, that you would make these things go and happen because we know you're the one that can open doors and do the things that we need for that. And so we pray that you would guide this process and that you would help us to be able to sense what you are leading us to be part of and to do today. We pray for the church beyond our local church today, Lord. And help the leaders of the church to be obedient and to do the things that are right and good and according to your word. Now, Lord, we see this list of people here on our prayer list and we pray for each one. But we also recognize, Lord, that there are needs that we carry in our hearts today that have not been mentioned out loud here. We bring them to you. And sometimes, Lord, we don't even know how to request prayer or to pray. And yet you've promised us that your spirit will come and help us. So even now, Lord, as we are before you, I ask that you'd help us to recognize that you will help us as we bring our needs before you. Help us to open our hearts and to receive what you make available to us and what you want to do for us. So as we come to you in this time of silence, help us look to you. Could we pray together the prayer our Lord taught us to pray the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, you know, we look here and we're going to ask our ushers to come and help us with our tithes and offerings. And we appreciate your faithfulness to the Lord during these days. And let's do what God wants us to do. Let's praise the Lord with the doxology. Thank you for the way that you've prospered us. Help us to be obedient to you with our giving and in our lives and in everything that we are. Amen.
Well, and, uh, you know, I'm looking on here, and the next thing in our bulletin is children's time, and we're uh, out a different group here today, and I, I kind of am smiling about that because I've lived most of my life uh, according to school schedules. Any of y'all know what that's like? And, uh, and so now that my wife retired from school teaching and I'm not, you know, in my parents' home, they were both school teachers and uh, my children are grown and uh, I, it's hard for me to keep up with the school schedule anymore, you know. I kind of, you know, smile and, and try to appreciate that, but uh, we do appreciate uh, Oliver and Penelope being with us and others, and so we're glad you're here, but I think we're just going to skip over that. Uh, does that make sense to y'all today? And uh, we'll uh, move on. Well, let's don't put that pressure on Penelope. She's busy back there today, so uh, we'll, we'll try to move right on with that. But uh, I do want to ask you to look at the scripture with me today. And uh, we have been, ever since I came here, in Luke chapter 11 and talking about prayer. And so uh, we're going to continue that, but we're kind of to the uh, end of this passage. So next week we'll be looking at something new. But we've looked phrase by phrase at the Lord's Prayer. And then there is teaching that Jesus did with his disciples after that. And we come to a passage that means a whole lot to many of us. But I can tell you that I occasionally do have somebody come and say to me, Pastor, what does this mean? I'm not finding the reality of what I've understood. So let's talk about that a little bit as we read here from cha uh, chapter 11, Luke chapter 11, beginning reading at verse 9. And here is what the scripture says. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will and it will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. If a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know, to have, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So here we see in this passage that it tells us to ask, seek, knock, and what it says to us, did you read it, it says, everyone who asks receives, he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, it will be open. You know, when I start thinking about this passage, I, I, this week I just couldn't help but remember, uh, you know, a video that I got a hold of some, you know, 30, maybe longer than 30 years ago now, of uh, John Wimber, who became an important leader in church, he's since uh, passed away, uh, but uh, he told the story of how before he knew Jesus and how he came to know Jesus. And uh, I've been influenced by a whole lot of different parts of his story, but, you know, he said it was, I was 40 years old before I ever met a Christian. And he said uh, in his testimony, he said, you know, people say, how could that be in the United States of America? He said, well, maybe I had met a Christian before, but this is his words. He said, none of them ever blew their cover in my presence. <laughs> uh, and so he was going through a really rough time. Now, he said my career was going real well. He was managing the Righteous Brothers. Some of us have heard of those uh, folks. He, uh, and so you know, they were doing real well. And, of course, one of the things he said was he was in Las Vegas. He was living in California, uh, but his group was working in Las Vegas. And uh, he said, you know, 
in that business, this is a struggle for me to even think about, but he said, uh, in that business, the later your group sings at Las Vegas, the more prestigious it is. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, his wife had thrown him out, so he was staying in a hotel. Uh, he was addicted to drugs, and he knew things were going terrible. And so, you know, it was the 70s, late 60s, early 70s, and he was trying to figure out what to do, and a lot of people were talking about spiritual experiences. So he said, I got to used to, after the group quit singing, driving out into the desert to watching the sun rise because people told me that that was a real spiritual experience. And so he said, I was sitting out there uh, watching the sun rise, and he said, I didn't have any experience or any knowledge of God, but I just said, this is what he said, Oh God, if you're real, straighten my wife out and make her do what I tried. <laughs> Y'all ever prayed that prayer? Don't, don't answer that out loud. Uh, and so he said, you know, as soon as I got back to the hotel room, he said the phone rang, and it was my wife, and she said, I've been thinking about things, and how about if you come home? And he said, wow. And she said, well, what? He said, well, honey, you're not going to believe this, <laughs> but I'm in touch with the divine. <laughs> And she said, well, what do you mean? And he told her, I just prayed this prayer, and, you know, here your call is an answer to that. She, I mean, he didn't call it a prayer. He said, I just told God that, you know, if he was real for him to do this, and here it is, it's come true. And she said, oh, yeah, that's prayer. He said she suddenly became an expert on uh, the Bible and spiritual things, even though we'd never talked about them in our whole lives before. And, you know, I look back on that, and, of course, he talks about how he came to understand prayer in a very, very different way. But, you know, I have to recognize the fact that there are people that I've run into after many, many years who from time to time say to me, I've never had a prayer answered in my life. And then there are others who they talk about all the things they prayed for that they got an answer to prayer about. And I, and I have to realize that sometimes we need to sort through exactly what God is telling us to do when we pray. Now, we've pr talked a whole lot in these last weeks about what God is telling us to do when we pray um, and what the prayer that he taught us to pray tells us about who God is. But here, toward the end of this teaching, where these disciples had come to Jesus and said, teach us to pray, he says to us, and by the way, just before this passage, what we looked at uh, last week there in verses 5 through 8 talks about the fact, and we said, what he tells us to do is stay with it, be persistent, bring your request over and over again to God. Don't give up. Then he says to us, ask, seek, knock. And, you know, I've read just about all the commentaries and things in my library that I have about this passage. It's been interesting to me. Different people want to interpret this as different ways, and I've seen them try to break these questions up. By the way, in the Bible, uh, which is often written in poetic form, uh, I'm fascinated by how many people look at poetry differently than I do. I, I don't do very well with poetry, you know. It's just kind of different to me. And uh, I like the sound of it, but this sounds pretty poetic. Ask, seek, find, uh, knock. 
And, and so I look at that and it, you know, it's easy to remember, it sticks in your mind, it, you know, helps us to be able to work through all of the different things that are going on. But as we look at that, uh, in the Bible, poetry doesn't rhyme or necessarily have rhythm, which, by the way, that's one of the problems you have with poetry when you start translating from one language into another. But the biblical poetry, the way that it's structured, actually translates pretty well because you say the same thing in different ways over and over again. Often it's called doublets, and you have the same meaning. And so the most common way to translate this, uh, it, to interpret this phrase where he says, ask, and then he says, seek, and then he says, knock, is to say that all three of these words are telling us pretty much the same thing as this passage before that has told us to stay with it in prayer is that it's uh, telling us that same thing. Pray, pray, pray that asking of God and seeking for an answer from God and knocking upon the door of God are not three different things that we have different parts of it, but they are repeating for us over and over again the insistence that we can come to God and that God answers us. But if you've been praying very much over the course of much time, you've prayed prayers that didn't seem to be answered. It didn't happen. I've known people who said to me, you know who you are? Pastor, I didn't get an answer to my prayer, so God must not be real. Or I gave up on God because God didn't answer my prayer. Well, how do we sort through that? Because right here, Jesus, who we love and who we know that the Bible is based on, is saying to us, what is it? He said, everyone who asks receives. And he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. And so, I prayed that prayer, and I can get what I want. And we've got to be able to deal with that as we begin to make sense of this. And here's the problem that most people that I run into who are not grounded in what the Bible teaches uh, have come to understand that prayer and asking God for things is some kind of automatic, if I just do it right, I'll get whatever I want. And here's the problem with that, and I talked about this a little bit last week, which is prayer is not really about what we want. Prayer is our effort to connect with God in such a way that we'll find out what He wants. And so much of the world's religion that is not followed after Jesus Christ is based on if we follow the right religious formulas, then we can get the gods or God of that to do what we want. I occasionally see it in movies and different things. 
God will do what I want. And so like John Wimber, we've got this idea that if we can get in touch with the divine, wow, then we can have anything. It's kind of like I heard a sermon from a popular preacher where he was talking in the last few days. He said, you know, what we need to understand is that many people see biblical prophecy as somehow or another predicting the future so that if we could get a hold of a prophet, they could tell us what stocks to buy and then we'd get rich. <laughs> That's not what biblical prophecy is. What biblical prophecy is, God telling us what God wants us to do. <coughs> Prophets in the Old Testament were never popular. You know, I realized once I had children that when I told them what to do, they didn't love me as much. I'm just being silly about that. Of course they did. But I found out early on they don't like to be told what to do. But then after I reflected on it, I don't like to be told what to do either, right? But occasionally, sometimes, you got to be told what to do. Uh oh, I'm seeing parents poke their children now. Watch <laughs> out. What is that? There's something in us that resists even when we know that it's in our own best interest. And so, what the Bible tells us is that prayers are answered. Well, what's the form of the answer? Well, sometimes the answer is no. But that's an answer. Some, and, and stick with me on this because I'm not done with that yet. Sometimes the answer is yes. One of the ones that we seem to struggle with the most is the answer that says, wait, not yet. Stay with it. But sometimes being able to get in line with what God's doing, we need to be able to hear no. Now, it's interesting to me the illustration that Jesus gives about this here. He says, if a son asks for bread from any father among you, he's assuming that this is a loving father, isn't he? Because all of us want to think of ourselves as a loving father or mother. Will he give him a stone or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? I don't know. I've heard of people who eat snakes. They're pretty good, right? I don't, I don't know. What is it that they always say? Is it tastes like chicken? Uh, no, that's, that's not how they put that. And by the way, I did taste a snake one time. It didn't taste like chicken. What did it taste like, somebody asked? Well, it tastes like snake. You know, I actually ordered on a restaurant menu one time alligator tail. I said, what does it taste like? They said, well, it kind of tastes like chicken. Well, I tasted it. It tasted like crocodile tail. I, I mean, you know, I, things are different. But what's the point that he's trying to say is if your child asks you for something good, you're not going to give them something evil. You know, this is reversible. If the son comes and says, or like my 13-month-old grandson, if he picks up a rock 
And you know what he's going to do with it? He's going to put it in his mouth. And no matter how much he cries about it, I'm going to take it out of his mouth before he can swallow it. I'm not saying he's never swallowed a rock. You see, because if we as parents know that there are some things that our children might ask for that they ought not to have, don't you think there are certain things that if we ask God for and he knows how that's going to affect our lives, that he might say, no. But then, we've got things that we know are according to the normal patterns of what God wants to bring out good in your life. Now, you know, I'm standing here this morning looking out amongst this crowd, and I really do not know what kind of things are going in your minds right now. I'm very aware that some of you have got situations where you face tragic things in your life and you're saying, that can't be what God wanted. And yet, that's what I face. And what did Jesus say? If you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father, and this is the important key phrase here, I think, out of this passage, is will give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him. And so sometimes what we have to realize is that we have to not receive something we thought we ought to have, in order to be able to receive what we ought to have. And we've got to learn that the things we need are the things that God gives to us. Because we often only turn to God after we've tried to fix it ourselves. Because I can get, with my own strength and power, stuff that God doesn't want. What he wants is the Holy Spirit to come in and guide me and help me. Now, I'm going to stop. I could go on and on. But today is World Communion Sunday. And so Christians all over the world are receiving communion today. And uh, so we're going to receive communion in this service today. And, uh, you know, I'm still learning how y'all go about doing things. And so, you know, one of the things that uh, we talked about is the fact that you all often collect the cups wherever that tray is. Where, where do we put that, Sandy? It's, and I hadn't been used to that so that people go around and gather up the cups. Y'all have got a much more efficient way of, of doing that here than what I've been used to other places. Uh, you know, now we've got a tray back here in the back of those prepackaged kinds of trays, uh, 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 communion things, and if you feel more comfortable with that, we're glad for you to get one of those and to use it there. Uh, but uh, what I suspect that would be a good thing for that to be used for is if you know somebody who's not here today who would love to be able to receive communion, take them one as an extension of this service and uh, take one for yourself too and do it together with them uh, as you do that. Now, communion's done in many different ways. I had to learn early on in my ministry 
that some people are really stuck on their way of doing things in the way they've always done them. But there's not just one way to do this, and you do it in many different ways. Churches have divided over how they serve communion and that kind of thing. I remember a pastor friend who was pastor of a very large uh, church. He's gone on to heaven. He was telling how he and pastors of other large churches in Nashville uh, got the idea that they'd have a uh, uh, joining together of all the churches uh, in a big event downtown Nashville and have communion together. He said, it was a great idea, and we started talking about it and planning about it, and each one of us had a different way we thought we ought to do communion. He said, so finally we just planned the prayer service, uh, and we gave up on that. Uh, but what is the meaning of communion? It is a demonstration to us of what Jesus did for us in his death on the cross. And so today, we understand that this service is for all those who would repent of their sin and be willing to live at peace with their neighbors. So you don't have to be a member of this church. You don't have to be a Methodist. You don't have to be anyone except someone who's willing to receive what Jesus Christ has done for you to be a part of this service today. And so I say, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You have made from one every nation and people to live on the face of the earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. He commissioned us to be his witnesses to all the ends of the earth and to make disciples of all nations and today, his family and all the world is joining at his holy table. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. Gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, this is my body broken for you. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. On that same night, he took the cup, blessed it, gave it to his disciples and said, As often as you drink this, drink it in remembrance of me. This is my blood of the new covenant shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins and the sins of the whole world. And so, in remembrance of this, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with your church throughout the world and strengthen it in every nation and among every people who are part of every denomination of Christians to witness faithfully in your name. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory 
and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Roy and Sandy, will y'all come and help us uh, as we receive communion today? And uh, like I say, I'm still trying to understand how we work this, but uh, I guess we can just put it right there, and, uh, and we would invite you to come. <laughs> we would invite you to come and receive, uh, and don't run over each other on your way here and come back. Uh, y'all are used to having uh, starting in one area and uh, moving that way. Is there anybody else who would like to be served in your pew or would like to be served? Jane would like to be served. Others? Uh, what do you need, Jane? We're not doing that. Let's pray together. Oh, Lord, I do thank you for what you've done for us. It's been demonstrated by this communion service today. I just ask that you'd help us to recognize that you want to bring good things in our lives as we call upon you 
and let you direct us in everything. Amen.